Hey everybody. Hope you're good. Happy Sunday. Um, I'm just back in my old flat. The first place I lived when I moved here. Um, so I thought it would be cool to do a vlog from here. Um, and I just wanted to, I was reading this because I'm kind of going through Ephesians at the moment and um, Ephesians 5 is so good because it's Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. So um, these are people who were uh, Gentiles. Um, there are some Jews in it, but uh, it was to Gentiles. Um, and so he's writing this letter to them and just addressing some problems in the church and stuff. And um, But chapter 5 is really kind of what Paul says as an example of what we should be living like, what believers should be living like. So I'm just going to read um, almost the whole chapter, maybe, um, and kind of look at different points all the way through. Okay, so chapter 5 of Ephesians. Therefore be imitators of God, copy him and follow his example as well-beloved children. Imitate their father. Okay, so how do we imitate God if we can't see God? Well, remember when Jesus was walking the earth, he said, um, if you've seen me, then you've seen the Father, because those who have seen me have seen the Father, because the disciples were saying, well, just show us what the Father looks like. Show us the Father. And he's like, seriously? You haven't gotten it by now? If you've seen me, then you've seen my Father, right? Because um, he was, Jesus was the perfect example of, of the Father's heart, of God's heart. Um, so be imitators of God. Otherwise, be imitators of Jesus, right? So read how he lived, how he walked, what he did, um, what he spoke, and what he's still speaking today through his Holy Spirit, and follow that. Um, and it says, imitate their as children imitate their father. Um, so as we get to know Father God, so we imitate him, right? And walk, so verse 2, and walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. But immorality, sexual vice, and all impurity of lustful, rich, wasteful living or greediness must not even be named among you as is fitting and proper among saints, God's consecrated people. Okay, so um, it shouldn't, things that are immoral, excuse me, sexual, impure, lust, rich, richness, wasteful living, greediness, shouldn't even be done, thought of, talked about um, amongst believers. Um, let there, verse four, let there be no filthiness, obscenity, indecency, nor foolish and sinful, silly and corrupt talk, um, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting or becoming, but instead voice your thankfulness to God. Okay, so... That's pretty point blank. Uh, Paul's not mincing his words. He's saying, if you um, can't be encouraging, if you can't be, I don't even like to say the word positive because that's such a worldly term, but you know, if you can't, if the comments that come out of your mouth are not encouraging, are not positive, are not uplifting, are not glorifying God, then you shouldn't be saying them. Keep them in here. And if you're keeping them in here, then ask the Holy Spirit to renew your mind through, through his words so that they don't even get in there right? But that's basically it. So you shouldn't be swearing. You shouldn't be doing rude jokes or s some sarcasm. <laughs> you know, some sarcasm is just people's inability to be totally honest. So they use jokes and humor to kind of get their point across. Um, but this shouldn't even be, shouldn't even be happening in the body of Christ. There's no room for it, right? Um, so verse five, for be sure of this, that no person practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life or one who is covetous, who has a lustful desire for the property of others and is greedy for gain, for he in effect is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So basically, pretty much people who are purposely sinning in terms of sexual vice, impurity, um, in their mind, uh, who are greedy, right? Those people who are practicing that sin, not people who are 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 walking their out their freedom walking out their their salvation and you know they're struggling but they're they're seeking freedom you know seeking deliverance this is people who are calling themselves christians but secretly behind closed doors they are willing willfully sinning um that's homosexuality people who are practicing that um that is people who are sleeping together before they're married that's people who are doing stuff that they ought not to be before they're married um and willingly doing so 
you know, like not resisting temptation, not fleeing temptation or dodgy circumstances. So that's, that's what Paul's talking about. Uh, verse six, let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for these sins. For through these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of rebellion and disobedience. So do not associate or be sharers with them. Okay. Pretty strong words. Don't associate or be sharers with them. People who confess and profess to be followers of Jesus and yet are willfully doing this and making up excuses as to why it's okay to do it. Right? Anybody tells you, ah, oh, but sure, I, you know, we're sleeping together before, before we're married. Sure, we're getting married anyway. No, sorry, that doesn't fly. <laughs> you know, God's pretty specific about that. Paul's talking about it. You know, or people just who just make up excuses, <clears throat> even for homosexuality. You know, unfortunately, God doesn't like it, want it, didn't create it. So it doesn't happen in his kingdom. Um, you know, it's in his word. I didn't make it up. I don't know why he is against it, but he's God and he can say whatever he wants. And he just didn't create it that way, you know. So um, people who call themselves Christians and yet willfully do these things, you know, you're not to associate with them. Um and it's a sad thing, but that's the reality of it. Uh, for once you were in darkness, verse 8, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Lead the lives of those native born to the light. For the fruit and the effective, for the, for the fruit, the effective, the, the product of the light of the spirit consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart and trueness of life. So basically the fruit of walking in the light is goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. And try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. So let your lives be constant proofs of what is most acceptable to him. Take no part in and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprises of darkness, but instead let your lives be so in contrast as to expose and reprove and convict them. Okay, again, he's talking to the church. He's not saying, you know, reprove and expose unbelievers you know no he's talking about people who profess to be believers if there are dodgy dealings going on amongst believers you are not to have any part of it in fact you are to reprove them and you are to be co a contrast to them and you're to expose them and you know tell them they're wrong so that they can repent and not risk their salvation over it seriously i think people are really put their salvation at risk because they think god oh, sure it's not that bad nobody knows <laughs> I don't know. It's why would you even want to? Why do you want to get as close to darkness as you can or as close to the bar or the line as you can when God, you know, I was saying this to somebody the other week. Like sometimes I think the we as Christians think, okay, here's the world. And, you know, we think, okay, how close can I get to the world and you know, before I actually sin? Like how close can I get to that line before I actually sin? You know, and we and we end up getting as close to as to it as we can um thinking oh but i'm not sinning i'm it's not that bad you know meanwhile god has called us to holiness which is like from here it's like woo way up beyond space you know and he says you be holy as i am holy right and that's through christ that's not of our own you know we can't make ourselves holy but he says be holy as i'm holy that's the standard okay so the standard is way up here we don't lower our bars. We don't lower the moral standard just because we think, oh, well, I haven't totally done it yet. I haven't been bad. I haven't been really done it, done something wrong. You know, no, the whole idea is not for us to lower our standard, but to heighten our standard, right? Holiness is the standard through Christ. Um, for it is a shame even to speak of or mention the things that such people practice in secret. Okay. So these people who claim to be Christians and aren't, but when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible and clear. And where everything is visible and clear, there is light. Therefore, he says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine, make day dawn upon you and give you light. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be ever filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. 
speak out to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise and voices and instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord at all times and for everything and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. Right? So he's, Paul's basically saying, listen, leave what you used to do in the world behind. Now, when you're part of the kingdom, the things that we do in the kingdom now are encouraging each other with songs, hymns, spiritual songs, talking about what God's doing in our lives, giving our testimony, sharing about the word, talking about what we're learning in the word. Right? That is our, that's our new life. That's what we do. We don't gossip. We talk about God. We don't, you know, say what we found out about some other person. Uh, I heard this person did this last weekend. No, we don't do that. Now we say, here, guess what God did in my life last weekend, right? Okay. Um, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Wives, be subject to and be submissive and adapt yourselves to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, himself the savior of the body. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such things, that she might be holy and faultless. Even so, husbands should love their own wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and carefully protects and, and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Because we are members of uh, parts of his body, for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is very great, but I speak concerning the relation of Christ and the church. However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self, and let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates and esteems him, and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. That's a mouthful. Anyways, okay, so that last part, that's pretty, you know, uh, self-explanatory. So... Wives are to submit themselves to the husbands. God is, Jesus is the head of the church. He is the head. We are his body. He is the cornerstone of a living, of a house, of the temple. We are living stones. We are based, we are built upon the cornerstone. Um, the body is attached to the head uh, because the head gives direction to the rest of the body. Um, so you basically, when you're, you know, what Paul's talking about here is in marriage, Christ is the head of the body and the body is submitted to the head and same in mar with marriage. Uh, the husband is the head and the wife is, you know, the body. And so the wife submits herself to, to the head because the head is ultimately under Jesus. So Jesus is the head of the husband, husband is the head of the wife. And there's a reason for that because the husband is the protector of the wife and it's his role, it's his responsibility to look after his wife and his family and to love and to cherish her and nourish her as he does his own body. And in that, the wife finds protection, finds her covering, right? And there's, there's freedom in that, right? So wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Um, if you're used to wearing the pants in the family and you're a believer, take them pants off. Give them to your husband <laughs> um, because it's not your responsibility. God will hold your husband responsible for his family. Um, and he will hold the husband responsible for either taking the lead or not taking the lead. If he took the lead, then he will hold him responsible for how he led his wife, his children. If he did not take the lead, and he allowed his wife to dictate things, he will be responsible for not taking the lead. And I'm sure the Lord will say, well, why did you not fulfill your role that I gave to you and step up and be the man of the house? Um, girls, there's no such thing as feminism in the kingdom of God. Sorry. If you know who you are and you know your identity, you know who you are in Jesus, who he made you to be, you don't need to be a feminist because he dictates to you who you are. Um, not your husband, not any other man, not any other women, not any women's movements. He does. So you don't need to prove a point. Jesus has already done that for you. So that's the end of that. Uh, I hope you have a great Sunday, a great week, and I'm sure I will do another one.
some point this week. God bless.